Okay, on the last slide, you should have answered the question, what was the importance of that SpaceX launch in May? If you selected all of the above for this, you are absolutely correct. There are a lot of really important things about this launch that just happened a few months ago. First off, it is the first time a privately owned company has sent astronauts to space. SpaceX is not part of the government like NASA is. It is actually owned by just one person, the same person that owns Tesla actually. And it's the first time we've used a company like that to actually send someone to space, which is pretty important for a lot of reasons. Uh, it is also the first time that since 2011 that astronauts were launched to space from American soil. For the last almost 10 years, we've been using uh, Russia's space system or space agency to send our astronauts to space, meaning we fly them over to Russia and then we go up on Russian rockets to get to the space station. So now we can start sending astronauts from our own soil again, uh, right in Florida and actually launch them up to space ourselves. And it is the final step before NASA can start using SpaceX to launch their own astronauts, making space travel easier and cheaper for them. The two astronauts you saw were actually SpaceX astronauts. They were hired and trained by that company but now NASA is gonna start sending their own astronauts up on these SpaceX shuttles. Uh, this makes it a lot easier because they can use the people that they wanna train. Uh, it also makes it a lot cheaper. It's about $30 million cheaper for NASA to use SpaceX rather than sending them to Russia and have Russia send them up. Uh, that's a lot of money when you're talking about $30 million per person, per round trip ticket, that is a lot. So all of the above were reasons that that SpaceX launch was really important. Before we move on, I do want to take a clip from that video. Uh, I put this screenshot up here, and this is actually the control panel for these astronauts. They have three really big touchscreen monitors, uh, a lot of instruments on there. They can see the Earth right here. They can see all of their data in like nice little tables and charts and graphs. Uh, they do have quite a few buttons down here, but most of the controls are all through these touchscreen uh, screens. So comparing this to what astronauts used to deal with, that looks like this. The Saturn V is the rocket that has sent astronauts up in the past. It is how we first got to the moon. And the inside of the Saturn V, the same control panel, looked more like this. You have literally hundreds of buttons surrounding those astronauts. Uh, their instruments and their data are not displayed on these nice little screens. They're on like these scrolling wheels. You have all of these different dials to look at. It was a lot harder to get all of that information they needed uh, and then know what to do with it. You have hundreds of buttons that you had to be trained on where they were, what they do, when to use them, when to not use them. Uh, so this was very, very different. You can even see like the seats don't look nearly as comfortable as these guys probably are dealing with. So there have been a lot of ways that technology has advanced since our last space launch. Uh, and you can just see that just by looking at the actual shuttle that they're going up in. So our next part of our lesson is going to be uh, actually reading a quick article on the history of space exploration. I'm going to read this article out loud in this video. On the next slide, there is actually a link to the same exact article. If you'd rather read on your own, you don't want to listen to me anymore, you can feel free to go to the next slide, skip the rest of this video, and read the article on your own. Just make sure you know there are going to be some questions after the article to make sure that you've read and that you understand everything in it. If you want to stick around, it's a pretty short article. I'm going to go ahead and read through it for you. You can listen, follow along, and read on your screen as well, and then be ready to answer the questions after the article. So this article is from the National Geographic, which is a really good source for this kind of thing. Uh, the history of space exploration. During the time that has passed since the launching of the first artificial satellite in 1957, astronauts have traveled to the moon, Probes have explored the solar system, and instruments in space have discovered thousands of planets around other stars. And before we start, you have a picture here of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, the first two men on the moon back in 1969. Right. Humans have been traveling to space for over 60 years. Our journey officially began on October 4th, 1957. On this day, the Soviet Union became the first country to send a human-made satellite into Earth's orbit. The Soviet Union, now Russia, was a large group of countries that included Russia. Its satellite was named Sputnik. A satellite is an object that orbits or circles a planet, moon, or star. Make sure you know that. Sputnik orbited Earth. It made one full trip around the Earth every 96 minutes. A month after the Sputnik launch, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 2. 
This was an even bigger accomplishment because Sputnik 2 carried the first living creature into space. It was a dog named Laika. A race to space. For years, the United States and Soviet Union had been competing to develop satellites. The countries were not getting along at this time in history. The conflict was known as the Cold War. There were no battles. It was mostly a war of threats. Still, the United States was worried. They were falling behind in the race into space. The U.S. had been working on its own satellite before the launch of Sputnik. There were two failed attempts. Then, finally, the U.S. had success. It launched the Explorer satellite in 1958. Explorer carried scientific instruments, one of which was a Geiger counter. This tool allowed the U.S. to study high-energy rays in space. The rays reach our solar system from the faraway stars and galaxy. In the late 1950s, the United States created a government group to run the space program. It is called the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA. The Soviets met many space goals first. Meanwhile, Soviet successes continued. The first human in space was a Soviet named Yuri Gagarin. He made one orbit around Earth on April 12, 1961. His flight lasted 108 minutes. About three weeks later, NASA launched astronaut Alan Shepard into space. His spacecraft did not go all the way around Earth, though, and the flight lasted just 15 minutes. The Soviet Union met several space goals ahead of the United States. The Soviets launched the first satellite, first dog, and first human into space. They achieved the first spacewalk. This was the first time a person stepped outside of a spacecraft in space. They also sent the first woman astronaut into space. The U.S. launches forward. In 1961, American President John F. Kennedy gave NASA a challenge. He wanted the U.S. to put a man on the moon before 1970. NASA worked hard to meet this challenge. They developed Project Gemini. Astronauts tested what would, need, what would be needed for a flight to the moon. Project Apollo followed Project Gemini. Apollo took astronauts into orbit around the moon. Then it took them to the moon's surface. In 1969, on the Apollo 11 mission, Neil Armstrong became the first human to step on the moon's surface. NASA had met President Kennedy's challenge. NASA would land humans on the moon five more times. During these missions, astronauts collected samples of rocks and dust that scientists still study today. During the 1960s and 1970s, NASA also launched a series of space probes. Space probes do not have human pilots. They are robotic spacecraft that explore space. These probes study the planets Venus, Mars, and Mercury. Probes help scientists find planets. Space stations were the next step in exploring space. The first space station was the Soviet Salyut 1 station. This was launched in 1971. Then NASA launched the Skylab space station. Skylab was the first laboratory where astronauts and scientists studied Earth. Today, astronauts do research on the International Space Station. It's like a science lab orbiting Earth. Astronauts from many countries work together there. The Apollo moon program ended in 1972. Much of today's space exploring is done by probes. Probes have made many discoveries. They have taken photos of the surface of Mars. They have even discovered oceans underneath the surface ice of one of Jupiter's moons. Scientists think these oceans could contain life. Other instruments in space do important work too. One example, example is the Kepler Space Telescope. Now retired, this space telescope has discovered thousands of exoplanets. These are planets outside of our own solar system. And in this uh, picture that we looked at at the beginning of the article, this is a less belligerent but no less competitive part of the Cold War between the Soviet Union and the United States was the space race. The Soviet Union bested its rival at nearly every turn until the United States beat them to the finish line by landing astronauts on the moon. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin completed that mission in 1969. So basically, our, to summarize, the reason we were trying to get to the moon and get into space was kind of like a competition with Russia. They had this war going on where nobody actually got hurt, nobody actually went into battle, but it was just kind of threats back and forth. And we thought the country that could probably send someone to the moon or send someone to outer space is probably the more powerful country that should be feared by the other one. So they were in this race to get people into space. Now, throughout the article, we kind of explored how that space exploration evolved. And now we actually work with them to get astronauts into space and study on the International Space Station, and they are up there together. Uh, and we also talked a lot in this article about space probes, which we're going to learn more about throughout the day. You're going to watch a quick video about them, and we'll talk a little bit about how they connect to what we're doing in this module. 
for right now. If you want to read the article or open it on your own, you can do that in the next slide. After that, you're going to have a short quiz on what we read in this article. So you can go ahead and start that now.